Um, it's a pleasure to be in Dublin, not only because I always enjoy coming here and I'm always impressed by the warm welcome of the Irish people, but also because our two countries and the whole of Europe actually are going through critical times and I feel it's particularly important to try to understand the current issues and reflect on the possible political answers to them. So as mentioned already, it's a particularly sad day for France, as it seems that extremism has scored points, um, where large-scale racist uh, crimes had been relatively avoided in the past years. And without overheating the debate, uh, one can regret that extremist ideas have been given a receptive platform recently uh, in the media and the campaign in France. But let's come to the subject of today and start by stating a few figures showing that France is not in a good state. It has 2.8 million unemployed people and 15 million inhabitants can simply, simply not pay their bills at the end of the month. The public debt stands at 58% of GDP, and it has doubled in the last 10 years. Uh, it could rise to almost 100% within the next two years with an increased borrowing cost now that the triple A has been lost. The budget deficit has jumped from 2.5% in 2007 to 7.1% in 2010. So, of course, there's been the financial crisis starting in 2008. But an analysis by the independent Cour des Comptes shows that 40% of the deficit in 2010 was due to the crisis and to measures to political answers to confront the crisis. The forecast growth in the next year is 0.9%, and some hot questions are not solved yet including the financing of the pension system and the financing of the universities. So we will know in 46 days exactly who the next French president is and in exactly 87 days if both chambers in the French parliament are run by a left-wing majority. It is now the case in the Senate since last autumn. Uh, we don't know if it's going to be the case in the National Assembly. So given that bad picture, should the left win in France, what would this mean for France, for Ireland, for example, and for the rest of Europe? This may be unknown to the public, but in 1796 <coughs> and in 1798, the revolutionary France attempted twice to invade Ireland, uh, so may say to free it, depending on the, on the perspective. And later on in 1848, France, by fear of entering into a costly war with England, declined to offer help to the Irish rebellion. This time, given the relationship between France and Ireland, based on close ties between the two countries, is France going to export its red revolution? So I'll consider the chances, the real chances of the, of the left uh, to win these elections in, uh, by, by quoting some polls as well before contemplating the possible consequences for, for the country and for Europe. So what are, we re what are we really talking about? Hollande is still in a very strong position since the open primary election uh, uh, in last November. Uh, as all the polls except for one are pointing to his victory and he leads over Nicolas Sarkozy with 28.5% of voters planning to vote for him in the first round against 27.5% uh, planning to vote for Nicolas Sarkozy. Let's not forget that the error margin equals to three or four points in political polls. So Hollande and Sarkozy might arrive in equal uh, terms uh, in the final round. Um, in 1981, when Mitterrand got elected, he, in the first round, he arrived second with 25%, whereas Giscard scored 28, 
and Chirac scored 18 percent. And that didn't prevent Mitterrand from uh, winning in the end. So, as you know, Hollande has added all second ballot voting mm -hmm. intentions for more than uh, one year now. And 70% of Barou voters, so the center voters, transferring to Hollande, and only 30% of Le Pen voters transferring to Nicolas Sarkozy, which uh, may lead to the question, why is uh, the current president taking that stance on immigration issues, for example, as in terms of political strategy that may not be uh, the most helpful uh, way uh, for him to, um, to uh, guarantee his uh, success in the elections. So yes, Mélenchon seems to be benefit, benefiting from some sort of, a, of a, um, a success at the moment following his uh, big rally in Paris uh, on Sunday. Uh, but it, would, it is hard to see how he could score more than 15% of, uh, of the total share of the votes. And 15% is, is not more than what the total of the extreme left uh, uh, voters uh, did in 2007. So in a way, he's still not seen as a danger to François Hollande. He's rather a good way to rally uh, future voters in the second round still. So Hollande is expected to win with a, with a large and heterogeneous coalition made of leftist centers, center-left, centrist, and even extreme right uh, voters, just like Mitterrand did in 1988. Um, nearly 70% of those who answered surveys now uh, consider that they have chosen their candidates, with 30% of them who might change their mind still. So that's, that's quite a few uh, uh, percentage. But, and that is new, the risk of abstention is high. It seems to be higher than in the past, because at, on, at this stage, 30% of the French people might abstain in the elections, so in, in the presidential election, which it normally attracts a, lo a lot of voters. In 2007, at the same time, uh, the polls predicted the exact final abstention rate, which was 16%. Um, and according to Mr. Hollande's campaign director, Pierre Moscovici, most of, of abstainers, or the majority of abstainers, are left voters, so we don't know how this could impact on the election of Mr. Hollande. This is confirmed by polls. 30% of traditional left voters are not planning to vote, and only 25% of right voters say that they will not vote. Uh, this abstention rate is worrying. It, is, uh, it offers a space for populism and, again, extremi extremism. And whatever the candidate, there seems to be um, a, a common uh, agreement amongst uh, part of the electorate uh, saying that there's a lack of dream in that election. So it doesn't seem to uh, attract voters, especially in the suburbs and difficult uh, uh, areas, as it did in past elections, including mm. in 2007. And this is why the French Socialist Party has decided to launch this big door-to-door -door, uh, campaign with the aim of, oh, in, in a sort of uh, Obama-style campaign, uh, with the aim of opening five million doors. And we're trying to do this in London, but I must admit it is quite challenging. Um, so just to sum up the, the big picture about uh, the chances of the, of, of the left to win, uh, I think I'm quoting Angélique Chrysafis here. She's the uh, Guardian correspondent in Paris. And she said uh, that, yes, this election should be uh, won by François Hollande. Uh, but the French left can lose unlosable elections. Um, so in 2007 and 2002, the main themes were in the campaigns were similar, and they were based on immigration, security, unemployment, and purchasing power. And the two first topics, immigration and security, were, were were best treated by the Conservatives. Their proposals were popular at the time, 
and uh, hard measures were uh, were offered on criminality, on juvenile delinquency, were, uh, and with this idea of chosen immigration uh, being one of their right wing's uh, main late motive. Today, in 2012, the financial, the economic, the social crisis seemed to have changed uh, French voters' priorities. So in the polls, the main priority seems to be unemployment. And then the second uh, uh, theme is social inequalities and purchasing power. Education arrives third, health services fourth, and debt reduction is fifth in the ranking. And these themes are most uh, favorable to the left and to a left-wing uh, government. So what would be in the, the implications for a win of the left in, in, in France and the rest of, the, of, of, of Europe? Well, at the bilateral level first, and in particular with Ireland, it's important to stress that if François Hollande arrives in power, the relationship with the country will remain strong and important, as it has always been in the past uh, decades. There are many areas of common interest, the reform of the United Nations, agricultural policy, international aid, fisheries, defense, the financial and banking reform, and of course, uh, the European Union. And this will continue to be the case, and the two countries will continue to work together on those issues. But then what could change uh, across Europe, on the political scene in Europe. And here I'm more reflecting from, uh, for, for, as, as a French socialist living outside of France with a sort of critical view on what's going on in France and the programme of François Hollande, um, because I realised that his proposals uh, create doubts and questionings amongst other European partners. So Europe is one of Mr. Hollande's oldest and deepest commitments, but he's become increasingly critical of, of the uh, European Union's way of managing the economic crisis. And I quote him, he said, I've been European and I still am, but Europe, as I dreamt, as I dreamed of it, doesn't work. And for him, the union is returning to its, its uh, demon, which is national particularism and national self-interest. And he says, let us not blame any person or state in particular. Everyone complacently returns home. And this is what he's criticizing about the current uh, fiscal treaty that has been negotiated between the European partners. And this is why his objective now is a return to growth. So he plans to rely on loans from the European Investment Bank or Eurobonds to, to fund big infrastructure projects. So on the left in Europe, this may sound pragmatic and as an, as an alternative answer to the current additions of uh, austerity uh, policies uh, across Europe. But then on the right, it looks as uh, being idealistic and very, very far from the reality of European negotiations and the difficulties of negotiating between 27 member states. So what is actually behind Mr. Hollande's proposal? He's not saying that he will come back to the negotiating table and just uh, forget about everything that has been agreed upon the 25 mm -hmm. uh, member states that taking part into the agreement. What he's saying is that he would like to add further content to the treaty, which would be give a political sense to the directions where uh, Europe should go. Europe was based on, uh, on objectives following the Second World War, which were peace and prosperity. Now there is a lack of common objectives, and he wants to put to add some political content to the European project. So will he be completely isolated once he's elected? And will, apart from his big, heavy democratic legitimacy, would he only be able to count on himself and his negotiating skills to convince the other European partners? Well, the in, within the social democratic families, 
uh, most of the uh, uh, political parties uh, which are members of the Party of European Socialists agree with the idea that fiscal stability and disciplines are important, but that growth should also be promoted at the European level. And this is a com common understanding uh, between the socialist parties amongst Europe. And I was lucky to attend the lunch that took place between Mr. Hollande and uh, Mr. Ed Miliband in London when François Hollande uh, came over to London a few weeks ago. And that was at the heart of the bilateral discussions between the two leaders, how can they promote growth together at the European level. Um, and funnily enough, this uh, objective of, of promoting growth is not necessarily a, a left-wing objective. Um, the Secretary General of the OECD recently gave a speech in China uh, explaining why uh, growth had to be promoted in Europe and that recession plus recession ends up with deeper and worse recession and that without any particular measures to promote growth, Europe is just going to, uh, to, to an end. Um, and um, th th this person was also explaining that social, uh, rising social inequalities in Europe uh, make the situation worse. And the OECD is not particularly known to be progressive. It's more a, a, a kind of conservative institution. Um, even in the United Kingdom, and I'm giving my own perspective here, tomorrow George Osborne will make announcements regarding the new budget. And the Times was saying this morning, the hunt for growth. So there is a common understanding that ways to find uh, growth have to be found. But where the leaders differ and where there are differences is in the ways this could be implemented. But I'm personally convinced that there are grounds for negotiations. One example, Mr. Cameron would like to uh, put forward new proposals to build infrastructure in the UK, uh, transport in particular, uh, fast speed train, but also um, high speed broadband <coughs> to cover the whole territory. And uh, what, what his suggestion is to privatize the uh, motorway system, for example, and, uh, and let the uh, private companies manage motorways in the country uh, as, as, as a way to uh, attract new investments and, uh, and help build the inf infrastructure network. So Mr. Hollande wouldn't necessarily agree with a, pro pro well, there is actually a privatization of the motorway uh, system as it works in, in France, but in other areas such as water industry, for example, uh, that they, they, they wouldn't necessarily uh, uh, agree on the ways to do it, but at least the uh, aims seem to be similar. Mr. Mario Monti, uh, is taking a similar stance in Italy. And actually, there are 12 leaders in Europe who wrote to the, to the European Commission and to the European Council to stress the importance of uh, adding uh, growth promotion measures to the fiscal austerity pact. So all this to say, Mr. Hollande is not going from nowhere, and he wouldn't be necessarily completely isolated once elected uh, when putting forward these proposals. Um, so, just to sum up, I think these are very challenging times. We're probably at a crossroad in Europe. We have to decide whether uh, each country will uh, evolve on its own without too much solidarity, or if we want uh, a new political project for European countries. Uh, they are, these are challenging times for the left, in France certainly, for the left in Europe, as well, five countries only being ruled by le the left out of 27, but also for the whole of, um, of Europe. Uh, and the, the, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that the uh, results of the French elections will indicate a future for, uh, for the rest of, of, of Europe. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much.